<laughs> All right, we are building a PC today yet again. This is going to be the prize PC for the winner of the next episode of Bitwit or Nitwit. Be quiet. I'm going to go over their parts really quick first. We have their Pure Base 500 silent case. Very nice price to performance there. Pure Power 11 600 watt unit, 80 plus certified, very quiet in house fan, partially modular design with all black cables. I specifically requested some additional airflow in our case just because it is a silent chassis. So we've got some Pure Wings 2s. Looks like they gave us three 120s and a 140. That's perfect. Now, this is sort of my bad. They asked if I wanted a Shadow Rock LP, and I completely misinterpreted it as a Shadow Rock Slim, uh, so I got the LP, which means low profile, generally better or preferred for smaller form factor or compact cases when you have a uh, very low CPU cooler clearance, but uh, I guess this will do just fine. It just means that we have to use lower profile memory, which I have on hand. That's totally fine, um, but yeah, I was completely thinking that they meant Shadow Rock Slim, which I do have, but this is the older model that doesn't have the AM4 bracket mounting system, so I can't use it. Anyway, uh, still a fantastic cooler. Probably going to perform a bit better than a stock Wraith cooler from AMD. Uh, speaking of which, we are going with a Ryzen build here. So you can see here we've got a Ryzen 5 3600, fantastic six core, 12 thread CPU, great price to performance. Uh, what is this though? Why do I have a second CPU? Well, that's because our motherboard, if you guys hadn't already noticed, is actually X470, which means it requires a BIOS update in order to get this CPU working properly, which is why I have a Ryzen 5 2400G that is natively supported by this board. That way we can update the BIOS uh, and then swap out the CPUs to the 3600. So a bit of a workaround there, but I don't currently have any X570 boards I can actually part with. So uh, X470 it is. This is still a fantastic motherboard. This is the Gaming M7 uh, X470 from MSI. For memory, these are the only low profile sticks I have on hand that I can part with that'll actually be compatible and not cause any clearance issues with this CPU cooler. Um, so fortunately they are uh, eight gig sticks. So we'll have 16 gigs in total, but they are 3000 speed uh, DDR4. So I, I would have liked them to be a bit higher for Ryzen, but what can you do? At the very least, they will fit. Our GPU is definitely no slouch. We have an EVGA GTX 1660 Ti. That's right, faster than the normal 1660 and the 1660 Super that was recently launched. Uh, one eight pin connector there. Still a very nice card. You could even do some 1440p gaming on it. And finally for storage, we have a one terabyte mechanical drive from WD. This is one of their more or less eco-friendly drives. Again, I'm just kind of pulling this from our inventory, what we have available. Still perfectly fine for storing games and other media files on. And for our boot drive, we have a 240 gig Toshiba TR2 200 SATA Rev 3 SSD. As always, you can find links to all this stuff in the video description, but I think we're ready to build, so I'm just gonna just keep rolling here. Why not, you know? Uh, you know what we first need to do is, uh, again, install that or update the BIOS with our 2400G. So I'm gonna pop that in first. It'll also be good. It'll give us a chance to do a test boot because I haven't used some of this hardware in quite some time, particularly the motherboard. Just wanna double check to make sure that it's working properly. So uh, that'll be a good opportunity for us to verify that it is in fact working. Honey, look, I built this a dual PC. Two systems inside one case with one power supply. Why? <laughs> because, silly, it takes up half the space of our old PCs, fewer parts means more money saved, and it provides an incredible streaming experience. Best of all, there's no more contest of whose rig is better. With a dual PC, there's nothing left to stand between us. Cool. I call the top system. That's fine, I'll uh, I'll take the one with the integrated graphics. No problem. Build the ultimate dual PC with the Fantex 719 that supports two full systems and an arsenal of water cooling hardware. Enjoy a flexible interior layout that accommodates two power supplies or a single unit like the Revolt X that ships with a pair of cable sets to power two systems at once. For more info on the Fantex 719 and Revolt X, click on the link in the description below. I need a backplate. I don't have the actual retail box, so we're gonna have to get a backplate in here. <laughs> This this is this was working out like a year or two ago, but now I need like three of them. Alright, what's in here? Do we have an AMD backplate? Nah, I don't see an AM4 backplate in here. Okay, one sec. Oh yeah, we got the mother load of AM4 backplates here. And I'll take you two. Alright, let's just stick our backplate here and boom, lined up. Just a bit of Tim. Just a little pee drop. The Wraith coolers are absolutely perfect for doing test boots with because they're so easy to mount and install and uninstall, even with one hand, as long as you can see what you're doing. 
Okay, but two hands is way easier. Can't forget to plug in our trusty CPU fan. Now we get to ram in some RAM. Grab a stick, line up the notch, and apply even pressure. Please don't use this video as a build guide. This is just for entertainment purposes. Uh, we actually have a full length, hour long tutorial if you want more detail on exactly how to set up a system. If you follow this video, you'll probably break something. All right, power supply, you're up. Gotta mount this thick boy. And 8-pin EPS for our CPU. Look at this, this board even has an additional 8-pin connector for your CPU if you wanted to go higher core count, more stable, reliable power. I think we're pretty much ready for a test boot here. I just gotta plug in the power supply. Cause remember, this is a 2400G. We have integrated graphics. We don't need a discrete graphics card. We should be able to get a video signal straight from the back of the motherboard using, uh, what do they have back here? Oh crap. Okay, I thought we were ready for a test boot now, but we're actually not because this is an APU and I figured, oh, it's an APU. It's got integrated graphics. We can just get a video signal without having to install a discrete graphics card. But I was wrong because this motherboard doesn't actually have any video out, so there'd be no way to connect it to said monitor, which I should have seen coming because this is an X470 board, which is intended for Ryzen 2000 series CPUs, which generally don't have integrated graphics on them, so there'd be no reason to include a video output on the back of said motherboard. So let's just pop this in and wire it up. Hey man, slow and steady. There she blows. I think he's the one, you know? I feel like we just connect. What are you doing? Get away from my rear! Don't put it in my rear! Come here! Come here! Get over her! Ba -da 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 -da. Do we have surface-mounted power and reset? Yeah, we do! Love it! I've been building PCs for years now, but this is still terrifying. Waiting for the image to pop up. Oh, yes! Okay, we're good. Let me go ahead and get the new BIOS on a USB stick, and then we'll update this guy. Don't you know USB drives from China get deported? All right, let's shut this off. BIOS is all up to date, and let's go ahead and swap in the CPU for the 3600 to see if it works. All right, in we go with the 3600 down the hatch, Whoop. and Wraith Cooler. Where's my Wraith Cooler? Oh, I gotta clean that. That's nasty. Uh, good enough. Here we go. Bloop, 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 bloop. Mementos de Trutho. That means moment of truth in French. Give me a sign that you're working fine. Hallelujah. I never thought that they had it in them, but Be Quiet has proved me wrong once and for all. They've finally gone full waffle with their thermal paste application method. I don't even know what that means. Let's let's move on. It's actually perfectly fine, but I'm removing it anyway and applying my own because I accidentally smudged it with my finger. You can see I kind of messed it up there. Sorry. Good enough. Then we got this 120 millimeter fan that goes on the top. This is a downward firing cooler. So we just kind of do this and it should clip relatively easily for the camera. Thank you. We're finally ready to mount some stuff inside the case. IO shield coming in hot. Alrighty. All right, easy, easy there, boy. Beautiful, like a glove. Okay, I'm gonna screw the board down really quick, but I'm not gonna show you guys because it is literally the most boring part of any build. Power supply installation is next. Remove this PSU bracket and mount it to the PSU. I need two hands again. Who likes spaghetti? Yay! And with a firm thrusting motion, thrust. All right, so after the PSU install, I also went ahead and started plugging in some cables, like our 24-pin ATX cable for the motherboard, 8-pin EPS for our CPU, as well as our front panel connectors from the case. At this point, uh, we're almost, we're actually getting pretty close to being done here. We've got these fans to install, a couple drives, and of course the graphics card, that should all be pretty quick. So uh, let's do, let's do fans, let's do fans first. It's worth noting that the Pure Base 5 already includes two 140 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fans. These are really nice fans to, to come include with the case, by the way. So we've already got one at the back, one at the front. Since we only have one other 140 to work with, I say we just slap this on at the front, do some dual fan action at the intake, and then we can save the other 120s for the top of the case. It looks like we've got, actually, I think we can only put two 120 millimeter fans at the top there. So uh, we'll just have one spare fan left over. Put that aside for now. Let's get her done. Moving on to our drives, and apologies in advance, guys. The contractors just showed up. They're doing more construction in the living room. They're even closer to the studio room now, so you might pick up some sound there. Sorry about that. But uh, the show must go on regardless. Uh, we've got two drives here, SSD and mechanical. I was gonna put both of them in here until I saw this nifty little two and a half inch drive mounting area, which we can remove with a single thumb screw. Gotta love how they tighten it so tight from the factory that you can't really use your thumb to unscrew it initially. Bada bing. Bada boom. That was graceful, Kyle. All right. S to the S to the D to the... That's it. All right, let's pop this guy back in here. Oh, yeah. Removable drive cage must be removed to properly install hard drive. Oh, yeah. So how was your week, hard drive? I just feel like I'm in a cage. 
Every day's the same routine, it's all become so mechanical. I just feel this mounting pressure above me. Now we just gotta wire up our SATA power and data, and we're good to go. SATA data must your SSD have. But what good is your data without power? Ah, ah, ah. Getting down to the wire here. Come on. Uh, get in there. Eh. Eh. D again, not not a build guide. I think I think it's in. It's kind of hard to tell. Wifey sauce 2019. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just spent like literally 30 seconds on cable management. I think I added two zip ties to this whole thing because we've already got those Velcro straps that come included with the case. Uh, there's also a couple twist ties that were already here, but of course we have to do the ultimate test. One-handed side panel mounting. Yeah, getting the side panel on on the first try is one thing, but if you could do it one-handed. <laughs> you are a legend, Kyle. You never cease to amaze myself. Great call and be quiet to include two different top panel options for the Pure Base 500. We've got this one that's supposed to be silent optimized, it's got the damping material on the underside, and ventilation. This one, this is the one we're gonna use because we've got two fans at the top, plus I just generally prefer airflow over silence anyway. And the final piece. Weakest plastic peel ever. All right, we just gotta plug this all in and hope to God that it boots. I'm feeling a lot more confident since we did our test boot already. It's giving me some peace of mind, but you never know what could happen. So let's give it a shot here. Three, two, one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. By the way, there's zero RGB in here whatsoever, which is actually kind of surprising for a modern build. I almost thought something was wrong at first because I didn't have rainbow vomit all over the place right when I booted, but uh, nope, everything looks good. All the fans are spinning and we have a boot. This little guy is looking pretty good. He's ready for Windows installation and drivers. Unfortunately, this is where you and I part ways for now. Apart from that, guys, check out the merch store, bitwit.tech. Grab all the bitwit merch you can and tell all your friends. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.